At the same time, a team of puppeteers rehearsed and refined the movement of the trays that would be held by the penguin waiters. All the sets on Roger Rabbit have been built off the ground so that we can get underneath. And this is so that we can have rods and mechanisms going up through the floor into the bar so that the puppeteers watching television monitors can see exactly what's happening through the camera and they can get their musical cue and their visual cue and do the actions that they're needed. Equally important was how the actors would relate to the trays. A mime coach worked several days with the extras to help them visualize the invisible penguin waiters and to develop various routines. With the hundreds of elements involved, the process of setting up the scene proved to be long and laborious. This set is peculiar insofar as it is never still, never unlit. The lights are burning, the generators are running, to all intents and purposes, 24 hours a day. With two crews working simultaneously, Zemeckis and second unit director Frank Marshall spent days preparing and rehearsing the scene. Finally, after thousands of man hours, all the pieces were in place, and Roger Rabbit's most complex scene was ready to go. Let's uh, shoot. Roger Rabbit is its many tuned personalities, both old and new. Breathing life into these characters required the marriage of many elements. Props, costumes, sketches, voices, and things you wouldn't even think of. For instance, sound effects. Ooh. Say, Roger, give me a hand here, would you? <gasps> Ooh, how's that? Something like that. Anyway, few people realize that it takes more than just ink and paint to bring cartoon characters to life. Performing animated voices is truly an actor's art. Roger, you're on. Ah! I didn't know what your office was, so I asked the newsboy. He didn't know. So I asked the fireman, the green grocer, the butcher, the baker. They didn't know. But the liquor store guy, he knew. For the voice of Roger, Zemeckis chose stand-up comedian Charles Fleischer, who came up with the character's unique sound. I don't know, man. I just saw the picture of him, and it just evolved. It just sort of came out. I can't explain it. Something just happened. You can't put your finger on it. Hi, me, Eddie. Please. Remember, you never saw me. And then I came up with the idea of having him go and having his cheeks wiggle when he talks. And that became it. Please. And they bought it. I couldn't believe it. Joining the cast of Toon Voices was Lou Hirsch as Baby Herman, whose deep, gravelly voice was an asset. No! Oh, I'll be in my trailer! Taking a nap! Excuse me, toots. What I'm doing for my voice is everybody... They're always making fun of the way I talk because I have such a gravelly voice anyway. And I'm doing my imitation of everybody else imitating me. I tell you, Valiant, the whole thing stinks like yesterday's diapers. No, 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 I love my husband. You got me all wrong. You don't know how hard it is being a woman looking the way I do. For Jessica Rabbit, the filmmakers needed a voice that would match their vision of her, that of a sexy screen goddess of the 40s. I'm not bad. I'm just drawn that way. Who better than Kathleen Turner? 
And they gave me a kind of a sketch, you know, an idea that she'd be red hair, like, you know, sort of a uh, Veronica Lake sort of style, and uh, very, very, very slinky. And um, they said they just wanted the most sultry voice I could come up with. I'd do anything for my husband, Mr. Valiant. Anything. What a wife. I guess I'm sort of attracted to vamps, and this is a very safe vamp. I mean, it's only the voice, you know? <laughs> so I can't really be blamed for this one. I want you to know I love you. I've loved you more than any woman's ever loved a rabbit. I don't mind prolonging the execution. <gasps> Happy trails. No, thank Petty. I'm trying to cut down. In order to make it seem as if the cartoon characters were really there, Zemeckis had some of the voices on the set while the film was being shot. I do! I do! You don't! Listen, when I say I do, that means I do, you got that? To help Hoskins visualize Roger, Fleischer actually wore a costume that made him look a little more like a rabbit. He was there, and he's, he does it to such a degree, you can even smell this rabbit. What's up, Doc? Another famous rabbit makes a guest appearance in Roger Rabbit, along with some other famous faces from the 40s. But I never did. May Questel created the voice of the original Betty Boop. Yeah, what a lucky girl. I always had a high-pitched voice. I won a contest, and bingo, I was signed that night, and it was a big thrill, and I loved doing Betty Boop. But I still got it, Eddie. boop boop be doop boop boop be doop Tony Anselmo took over the voice of Donald Duck when Charlie Nash, the original voice, passed away three years ago. Does anybody understand what this duck is saying? This is the last time I work with someone with a speech impediment. And the voice of some of the best-known characters, Mel Blanc. Bad old putty cat. Shoot him now! Shoot him now! You keep out of this. He doesn't have to shoot you now. He just so have to shoot me now. Zemeckis took advantage of Blank's characters throughout the film. Oh, look, piggies. Me. What's up, Doc? Many people try to Im impersonate me or imitate me, but there's only one person that can do it properly, and that's my son, Noel. Noel, you want to come up here and give me just a couple of lines? <laughs> hey, uh, what's up, Doc? Hey, uh, what's up, Doc? He's pretty close, don't you think? You looking for a rabbit? Yeah, I'm looking for a rabbit. That's nice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Steve, got a new line for, for Mel. The so voices are recorded the before magic. the animation is done. Over 50% of the inspiration for the animators comes from what they hear on the track. You always record the voice first, and they animate to that. And, of course, the rest is the, the um, talent of the animator and his ability to act through his pencil. So the whole rabbit's head is out here now. After the live-action scenes were shot, Zemeckis described to the animators how he envisioned the characters coming to life. And the rabbit's like, doesn't want to go back in, and Hoskins is pushing him down and pushing him down and straining him and, like, just like, doing, like, tune squash on the top of his head. <laughs> they would make little thumbnail sketches of what they wanted to do, and then 12, 14 months later, we would see the final result. The reason it took so long is that all the animation was done by hand. No computers were used. In effect, the animators are creating a performance through their drawings of the characters' movements. We just act with a pencil, very slowly. In fact, we ought to be able to give a better performance because we can, we can rub it out if it's not right, if an arm's in the wrong place or you want to sigh, we can put it in. <laughs> the animators produce are first used for what are called pencil tests. They take the live-action background and superimpose line drawings over it. This is done to make sure the animation fully covers whatever mechanical device was used and to make sure the character's movements and expressions are correct. Test through to completion, there was enough work to keep hundreds of animators busy for over a year, 